Hi friends, I'm Jeffy G. I have the good fortune to have the time to learn a lot of different things in music production. And sometimes I'm working on a major project, a video or a song, and I come across all kinds of little things along the way that I learn, but I don't necessarily share. And I've been thinking, that's probably a mistake. I should probably record these things. I'm set up to do it and have just some informal videos on how to do stuff. And that's what this series is all about. I was playing around with Scalar. If you know Scalar, there's many different ways you can use it, but essentially you're gonna create a chord pattern is what we're after here. And there's presets under songs and by artists preset. It's gonna give you some chords that you could use. And in theory, you would just drag those down into your pattern area, into, you know, whatever progression you think makes sense. I'm going to change that second D to something else, maybe a C major. Okay, and then you click on this bind button where you see the C, and it assigns those chords to these individual keys on your keyboard. Shows you what the chords are, but it's just a way to execute those one, by playing one note. So you can choose chord progressions based on these presets, of which there are lots, I'm guessing hundreds. <laughs> and then another way is by artist. So if I choose Mike Huckabee, for example, I'm going to get a, a set of chords that might be common to, say, Mike Huckabee. I could listen to those. And if I liked all of those chords, I could just select them all, drag them down into this area. I could even select a performance. I want it played in a different way. That's all good. Uh, but what if I already have a chord progression in mind? What's a good way to get that into this environment? Not one of the presets that's in songs or artists. Well, let's clear this. Click on the little gear icon. It took me forever to find how to clear this. Let's find session, clear, and close, and then we're starting all over again. There's different ways to enter the chords. You know, one mode is to put this in detect. If you knew the chords and how to play them on your keyboard, you could just turn on record and play them. I just played those on my MIDI keyboard, turn off record. That's a fast way to enter the chords, but I'm looking for something else. I noticed on this page, this is the chord page. It shows you the circle of fifths, which is great. So if I'm looking for chords in A, this will click on the A and it's relative key F sharp minor. And I could just, you know, drag chords from here in. So if I'm looking for particular chords, that might be a fast way to get them. Another way I noticed, you can just type in the name, B minor seven. <laughs> you could drag that in. You know, that's a... So you could build your chord progression pretty quickly by just actually typing in the English name. <laughs> I never knew that feature was there, but it's pretty handy. On this one, I'll show you how this all came out. So here I am in Scalar, and you can see I've assigned a bunch of... I've assigned a bunch of chords, different chords. By now, you, you if you look at the title, you'll know what they are, but here's what it sounds like. You know, those chords are just something I wanted to use in a song. I thought, well, that's a really good chord progression. Maybe I want to rearrange those and use them to create my own song. I just like the way those chords flow together. Now you could use this pad mode in Scalar, which is pretty good. You can create those patterns. You see, I've created two rows and then I can execute those patterns with some pr performance parameters. <laughs> You 
can see those chords are playing repeats, which is managed by this playback timing feature. On this page, you can control the chord voicing, which octave and inversion the chord is playing. And you can modify that by a semitone. I don't know why you would, but you can. And then the duration of a chord and how many repeats. You can see here that first chord is repeating four times. This one over here is repeating repeating two times. You can create these playback timings, which is ultimately stored as the pattern. And then you can have as many patterns as you want. I kind of got distracted. <laughs> I just wanted the chord progression, but then just mucking around with it, I, you know, decided what would it sound like if I kind of modernized uh, Wichita alignment. So I had a lot of fun. I don't think I'm actually going to record Wichita Alignment. I'm going to go back to my original idea of just reusing that chord sequence. But it was fun to play around with Scalar in the process. If you find these things helpful, let me know. Click on the like button, drop a comment, click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.